Greetings folks and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. We have a packed show this week with projects, uh, funding website things, some news, also some fun Electromaker announcements as well. Um, so uh, let's get on with the show. So we'll be starting this show with a few projects and YouTube videos and things like that. But before we get started, a little quick housekeeping. If you are enjoying the Electromaker show, consider subscribing to the Electromaker YouTube channel. It's free and it won't really change your experience of YouTube all that much. However, if you click the notification bell as well, then you'll get a notification whenever a new show goes live. We only really put out one video a week on this channel, so you won't be getting spammed by us, but you will see when we put the video up. And finally, um, everyone asks you to mash the like button. I'm not going to ask you to do that, but if you could click it, um, that's a very good way of showing YouTube and, of course, us that you like the show. Um, these are the three simplest and, of course, free things you can do to support the show. There's no obligation, but it would make me very happy if you did. Anyway, let's get on with it. And we're starting the show with the news that Electromaker now has its own Discord server. It's been a long time coming and it's finally here. Um, as you can see, it is very, very new. There are only a few people in it and a few channels. It will be growing over time and we are very interested in hearing your feedback as to how it can grow. But yes, we have a Discord channel. I'm going to say hello world into it because I am not a very original person. Um, there will be a link to this Discord channel in the description of this video and I'm really excited to have a space we can all just get together and chat, which is a little bit easier to deal with than the YouTube comment section. Um, um, yes, Discord server, Electromaker, I'll see you in there. And we have yet another Electromaker announcement to start the show off, and that is that the NXP Hackathon 2021 is trundling along nicely. Um, the people who did submit project ideas um, have been selected, and they will be receiving their hardware. That is one of these two evaluation boards from NXP. Uh, they're both using the IMX RX, or is it uh, RT MCU Cortex crossover system. Um, I've played with both of these boards, um, and it's really easy to get started with it. There's a free Eclipse uh, IDE toolchain, the whole bit. Um, anyway, if you're interested, you can head to the contests page on the Electromaker website. It's not just the two development boards as well. They're giving away a bunch of headers here. Um, and this isn't the last you'll be hearing of these development boards and headers during this show, at uh, Shields during this show. Um, we'll be coming back to them later. But yes, uh, congratulations to those people who submitted projects and will be receiving their hardware soon. And for everyone who was taking part in this hackathon, I am super excited to see what you come up with. To start this week, we're looking at something a little bit different to usual. Now, Practical Engineering is a YouTube channel I've been following for a while. I love it, and I'm not the only one. There are millions of people who love this channel, um, and there's a good reason why. It's uh, simple uh, explanations of engineering concepts. There are many YouTube channels out there that do this, but few that do it as well. Um, and I saw it and didn't really consider putting it into the show this week until it showed up on the Hackaday blog, and I realized that they make a very good point. Um, which is, uh, yeah, there's actually quite a diff uh, quite a similarity, sorry, between the way electronics works and uh, the way f uh, flow and pressure in pipes works. Um, and uh, yeah, I just thought, despite it not being quite on brand for a show about microcontrollers and maker culture, it's one worth pointing out. Um, and on the off chance that you hadn't come across this channel before, um, I'd wager that if you are interested in making things with Arduinos and microcontrollers, you're probably interested in engineering on a larger scale as well. So admittedly, a bit of a tangent, a bit of a cur uh, curveball, but I'll leave a link to this video in the description of the video. Moving back to slightly more familiar territory, this is Learn Embedded Systems, a YouTube channel we've featured several times on the show before, um, with a very clear introduction to the SparkFun Thing Plus RP2040. That is SparkFun's board with the uh, Raspberry Pi silicon on it, the RP2040 chip. Um, as you can see, it's sort of Adafruit form factor, uh, feather form factor, but it's actually slightly larger than that. And there's a couple of nice things you can probably see straight away. USB type C being one, uh, a battery charging circuit being another. Um, but rather than me go through all of that, the reason I'm recommending the video is because it's a very clear step-by-step -step walkthrough of what this board is capable of. And there will be videos on this channel in the future coming up that take you through how you can set up a programming environment for this board and various other RP2040 hardware. Um, at least that is what he's planning on doing. Um, YouTube is a strange place, but I imagine that will be coming very soon. I will leave a link to this one in the description so you can go and watch it as well yourself. Oh, what? An anthropomorphic webcam? That sounds like... Oh, my word. 
Yes, this frankly terrifying but incredibly inventive thing is a project by Mark Tasia. Apologies if I've mispronounced your name. Uh, this is a research project um, which uh, is essentially making a statement about webcams. I mean, webcams are ubiquitous. They're all over the place. Um, special camera number two that I use on this show for the Mystery Box competition is in fact just a cheap USB webcam. Um, but this is, yeah, there's a number of features about this thing that make it amazing, but still terrifying, but amazing. So underneath the quite convincing skin is uh, a very nice compact little open hardware robot essentially. And what you're looking at here is a, a tiny little camera that fits inside the eyeball, um, as it was here, um, with a couple of servers that follow you around. Um, now, um, it will f detect faces and follow you around the room, but it's designed to do so in a way that is believable. Um, and it is actually, as you saw in the video before, quite uncanny, uh, the way that it moves. Um, they've designed it to follow some of the phys physiological characteristics of the human eyeball. Um, this is really worth a read. This is... Um, more than just a kind of joke or a fun thing to make. There's some serious research and some serious points to be made here. Um, and it is, of course, a, a fantastic write-up. Um, and as mentioned, it is open source and open hardware. You can access the files on GitHub. You can make your own terrifying uh, uh, webcam at home if you wish. So yes, there's many things about this that I find kind of odd and unsettling, but I think that's probably the point as well. Um, but it is a fantastic piece of machinery and it does make a very interesting point as well. Um, as to we have these things watching us all of the time, how would we feel if these things actually appeared to be watching us all the time? It's a nice thing to think about. Up next, a DIY Ben sensor that was featured on the Arduino blog. Um, now, I have come across these Ben sensors before, but I've never really looked into how they work, because to buy commercial grade Ben sensors or even hobby Ben sensors, it can be pretty expensive. So in a simple blog post, it highlights a video showing the Ben sensor working, um, as well as a link to the Instructables where it came from. Um, and uh, this Instructable tells you everything you need to know to make it. It's actually a relatively simple design in its own way. Um, it's, it's hinged all around this um, electromagnetic field uh, shielding fabric, which is essentially um, a conductive fabric. It's, uh, uh, well, it says here, look, it's medical grade silver plated, 24% uh, nylon, 24%. It is conductive uh, stretchy fabric. That's all you really need to know about it. Um, and this is a simple project that shows you how you can put that together um, and make a bend sensor that when you bend your finger, the resistance changes, and then you can sense that resistance using a microcontroller, in this case, an Arduino Nano, and use it to do something. Um, and as you saw before, well, the thing that it does in this case is turn on an LED, but that could be used to turn on anything. But yes, this is a great step-by-step -step instructable as how you can make one of these yourself with diagrams and explaining exactly how it works. Um, and I just thought it was worth featuring because you don't really see Ben sensors uh, mentioned all that much, but they are a very interesting and innovative way of working with microcontrollers. And I can imagine a full handful of these could get you quite a long way towards getting some very interesting interactions with the world around you if you set it up to make all kinds of noises, bells and whistles. But anyway, I'll leave the imagination side of it up to you, but I will leave a link to the Arduino blog post in the description of the video where all of these things are linked. And just quickly, if you'd prefer to look them up on Instructables as well, you will be looking for Willpower Studios. It is that part of the show where the mystery box competition would be, but instead we are doing something interesting this week. We are giving away a board from NXP. Uh, since we have the NXP hackathon moving along quite nicely, as I mentioned earlier in the show, um, I thought I'd give away some of the hardware involved with that competition. Namely, this uh, development board, which is the MIM RX 1010 EVK, um, but what you can see on top of it is a nice little shield. That's right, this week we are giving away an MIMXRT 1010 EVK. That is one of the two boards that the NXP Hackathon is being held with. Um, and uh, in case you are wondering uh, why it's up on the screen, well, I mean, it, it, it's also it's also here. I have I have quality second camera. In fact, let's 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 go full quality second camera, which is uh, not playing friendly with focus. There we go, sort of. I think. Now, there's a number of things about this board that I found nice. Um, uh, getting up and running with it is surprisingly easy. There is an Eclipse-based IDE, um, which is very easy to get started with with NXP's toolchain. And of course, this being an NXP product, there is a lot of great example code as well. Um, now, as you can see with my terrible camera work, um, there is a, a, a header here for um, shields. And yes, it will work with various Arduino shields, but NXP do have a few shields of their own. Like, for example, this header. Now, these Freescale headers, also from NXP, uh, can uh, perform a variety of tasks. This one is an absolute digital pressure and altimeter center, sensor. Sorry, um, And uh, yeah, as you can see, it is the Freedom STBC P3115. And I will be giving this away with the board as well. 
So yes, in short, an evaluation board with a powerful MCU on it that comes with a free toolchain and a free IDE, you can program it in C, um, and it has some audio capabilities, you know how much I like that. Um, and it also uh, comes with this nice little breakout sensor board that we're giving away with it as well. If you want to win this, all you need to do is be a subscriber to this YouTube channel, leave a comment on this video saying what you would do with the board if you got it, and um, we do want to see what you do with the board if you get it, because that's exciting. Um, and hashtag it with an NXP, uh, who, who make the board. Uh, conveniently and uh, we will announce the winner on next week's show where is it where is it there it is audio this is a little pdm microphone just here under my witch finger there it is 3.5 millimeter jack i don't know why i'm so obsessed with finding the audio capabilities of every single evaluation board that passes through my hands but i am anyway this is waffle on with the show It is time for a quick funding website things. And you may remember a little while ago, I looked at something called the Pi Uno Aura. Pi Unora? Pi, Pi Unora? Pi, Pi Uno Ra. Pi. It's, it's here now. Or at least by here, I mean they are now actively funding. They have raised $6,000 of the 15000 they are asking for. And you may remember this very cool little looking uh, baseboard for the Raspberry Pi Computer Module 4. Um, and I really like this one. We've talked about a few Compute Module Floor things uh, in the show uh, over the last few weeks. Did I say Compute Module Floor? <laughs> We talked about a few Compute Module 4 things uh, over the past few weeks in the show, but this one is very compact. And uh, yeah, uh, the Pi Uno Ra, Pi Unara, Pi Unara, Pi Unora, um, uh, makes reference to the fact that it has the Arduino Uno uh, pi, uh, pin headers on the top. Um, now, of course, you'll still want to be kind of careful what you use um, because you don't want to be plugging a 5 volt shield into this that will blow things up nice and quickly. But there's a lot of cool little features here. The biggest one for sure is the M point, uh, M2 slot on the bottom. Um, that that means you can plug in NVMe uh, SSD super fast uh, uh, storage um, and yeah there's just a whole bunch of stuff you could do with it but the reason I wanted to come back to it was the price because as you can see the baseboard is $39 and the uh, CM4 Lite version is $30 this is nice and cheap um, this is something that if you do have a compute module floor for for floor <laughs> Compute Module 4, what's wrong with me today? Um, this will be the perfect way to start playing with it because it is a familiar form factor. It puts all of the things you need to use the Compute Module 4 out on the board, like HDMI and plugging keyboards in and all that kind of stuff, um, and gives you the M2 extender while staying relatively cheap. So as well as announcing the price, uh, there are a couple of interesting things to note here. Um, firstly, I did not realize that it worked with uh, Stemmer, um, which is the uh, way of connecting I2C devices to various uh, other devices that Adafruit came up with. Um, and uh, as this video shows, uh, yes, here they are playing the Chrome Dinosaur game using um, a nice little I2C device, a little proximity sensor just there. Um, and uh, yeah, great game. Probably the most hated game in the world because you only play it when your internet doesn't work. So here it is with its quick connector, USB-C, USB 2, HDMI 2.0 and an SD card slot along with a couple of other things. The familiar Arduino Uno style GPIO headers um, and if you scroll down just a little bit here, this is a nice little touch I thought. Uh, yes, you could use this M2 slot for uh, uh, your SSD, but here it's being used with an RP2040, the Raspberry Pi silicon chip. Very, very nice. So there's a lot of great information on this page along with an FAQ from the makers um, and uh, as mentioned it is available for just $39 for the pro version and $30 for the light version. This is a really cool project if you're interested in the Raspberry Pi CM4 and want to know how to get started with it and of course I will link it in the description of this video. Now, I'm not an expert in anything, but it is rare that a project comes along that I have to look up almost every term before I can even begin to understand it. And Hegduino is one of those projects. Version 2 will be coming to Crowd Supply soon, and it is a very, very interesting bit of kit. Now, to understand Hegduino version 2, we need to look at Hegduino version 1, which, as it says here, you can measure real-time brain blood oxygen levels. Now, um, there's a few things I had to look up here. Um, usefully, the uh, version 2 page has a few very uh, good Wikipedia links to uh, functional near-infrared uh, spectroscopy and uh, a word that I'm going to try and pronounce and probably get wrong, uh, hemioencephalography along with pulse oximetry. But these are all ways of measuring your brain. So what this thing does essentially is measure changes in your brain waves um, and give you feedback on them in real time. That is a complete feedback system, which is kind of interesting because 
it opens a couple of sort of philosophical questions as to the way that you think, I guess. Maybe I'm just being complete cod scientist here because I have no idea what I'm talking about. But I can't help but feel like if I was measuring my brainwaves and then seeing them being measured, that would affect the way I thought and therefore change my brainwaves. And therefore, when I saw them change, I would change the way I was thinking and then they would show up on the screen and it would change the way I was thinking and it would be an endless loop of... Uh, the kit itself is a flexible band connected to some componentry and what looks like a little development board here. Um, and uh, as you can see, uh, it uses a, a ESP32 along with a MAX86141 pulse oximeter uh, uh, analog to digital converter. Um, it's absolutely fascinating. It is way too complicated for me to understand and it's something that I will definitely be coming back to when it goes live. Um, I'll leave a link to this one in the description and you can find links to all of the things that I had to read before I even attempted to talk about this. Um, there. We're going to finish the show by looking at a few news, updates, and new products that I've noticed over the week, beginning with machine learning on the Raspberry Pi. Now, this is a subject that is somewhat close to my heart. Um, I came very close to writing a book about TensorFlow on the Raspberry Pi, um, which never came to fruition. Um, but if I was to write that book these days, it would be way easier because of Edge Impulse. What is Edge Impulse? Well, it is an easy way to train models for uh, devices that maybe don't have the power to train it themselves. As it says here in the first paragraph of this blog on the Raspberry Pi blog, um, the, the Raspberry Pi 4 is actually good enough to do some fairly decent inferencing, but you don't want to be training models on it. That will take a long time. That's why Edge Impulse is such a fantastic tool. Now, if you aren't familiar with Edge Impulse, it's essentially a very easy to use browser based way to train uh, machine learning models. Um, uh, and it's incredible the amount of stuff that you can do on this. You can train models in just a few minutes using the bits and pieces on your smartphone. In fact, one of the examples here uh, shows you how you can do it. It's a bit of a trip if you head to the page and try it out yourself. Um, but anyway, that's not really what I want to dwell on. I want to go back to the blog post. Because this blog post isn't just announcing that uh, Edge Impulse supports Raspberry Pi natively now, it is a fully fledged tutorial as to how you can get started using uh, audio and video to create your own object detection model. Uh, in this case, you know, they're using a, a, an apple and an orange, uh, getting various sensor data of said apple and orange, and then uh, training the model in the cloud, testing it in the cloud, then deploying it onto their Raspberry Pi. Um, and uh, you'll just have to take my word for it when I say that compared to every other example um, of machine learning I've done on embedded hardware, and I really haven't got much further than um, taking examples and then turning them into real projects. I'm not at a place where I can completely write my own um, code in, in terms of machine learning. I've, I've made a toy neural network once, um, and it was a, a mess, and I didn't understand all of it. I'll be the first to admit that. This is incredibly easy to use compared to any of that. So yes, exciting times. Edge Impulse really does let anyone set up a very simple machine learning uh, live object detection model on their Raspberry Pi without having to follow a million difficult tutorials. It's incredibly easy to use, and I suggest you go and give it a look. Moving over to Olimex, who have made yet another fantastic improvement on an already existing microcontroller. This time, it is the Raspberry Pi Pico, and they have made this baseboard for it, which, as you can see, adds microSD, HDMI, a 3.5mm audio port, and a battery port here, along with a few other cool little features. So you'll see there's a couple of extra connectors here. Now, one of them is the uh, UX connector. This is Olimex's own connector for connecting to things like UART, I2C, SPI. Um, and there's a JST 2.0 connector, uh, which just makes it a little easier to connect out, um, which you'll need because uh, some of these pins are going to be taken up by the other parts that the baseboard uh, populates. Now, this thing alone is cool, but one strange side effect of them not being able to get enough official Raspberry Pi Picos, but able to get a load of the RP2040 chips, is that they've actually created their own board as well. Now, this is the RP2040 Pi, which is very similar to the RP24, uh, to the Pi Pico, sorry, but has a few nice quality of life add-ons. So one of the things they've added is another USB port uh, solely for adding power to the board. Um, and if you look at this thing on the bottom here, this is another one of the UX connectors, but this is a micro UX connector. And there is also a place that can be populated to add a JTAG debugger. Anyhow, there is lots of goodness to read here, and if you are interested in the Raspberry Pi Pico, especially rigging it up to a screen and using it as, as a sort of non-operating system computer, there's a lot you'll enjoy here. I will leave a link to it in the description. Moving over to Adafruit with the Fun House, which is a fun way to turn your house into an automated home. 
So at its core, this board has an ESP32-S2, um, which is, of course makes it wireless, very useful for home automation. You can see it also has the color screen on there, along with a humidity barometer and temperature sensor, these little fairy lights across the top, a header for a mini PIR sensor, and a little capacitive touch button here. And if you want to attach more things to it as well, there are various ways to do so here. That is one of the uh, Stemmer QT I2C connectors that Adafruit provide for their sensor breakouts. Um, and three JST three pin uh, uh, ports here that you can attach to. So this takes a lot of the hassle out of making a DIY smart home, basically, or home automation setup. Um, for a start, it uses CircuitPython, so it's very easy to program. Um, and uh, this thing could easily just be attached to a wall and you can plug things into it. This is a great way to learn about home automation. We may be a long way away from Christmas, but once again, this is a perfect gift. And we land, as we so frequently do, on the fantastic CNX software, um, with the announcement of the ESP32C6. Now, Espresso have been going at a rare clip recently. They've released a bunch of new ESP32 variants, and this one is interesting for a number of reasons, um, not least because it is RISC-V. Now, the C6 isn't the first ESP32 RISC-V uh, system on chip they've put out. Um, I believe the C5 was as well, or maybe I'm thinking of the wrong number here. Um, C3, C3 was the risk, uh, first risk five one they put out. The difference here is that this one is much faster. It runs at about 160 megahertz or up to, um, and it is uh, Wi-Fi 6 compatible. As you can see from the block diagram, it is also Bluetooth 5 compatible and it uses the same peripherals and sensors as most ESP32 chips. There is a reason why these chips are so dominant, why so many people love them. Um, they are easy to use, they are fantastic microcontrollers in their own right, and they connect to everything. And I have no reason to think that we won't see the C6 showing up in a lot of things very, very soon. That was our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, we'd love to hear what you think of the show. And now with the new Discord server, that's the perfect place to do it. I'll be hanging out in there quite a lot. Um, and if you have any suggestions for the show, maybe we can get a channel going for things that you think might fit on the show. I'm always loving to hear your projects. And of course, don't forget that you can put your projects up on the electromaker.io website as well. That is a great place to put them so people can see them. Anyway, um, as always, I hope you have a fun, safe and creative week and I will see you in the next one.